and when you're actually looking directly and relatively easily at the disease process itself it's understandable that it's hard to find a better measure because what's better than seeing the extent and presence of the actual disease process which is what it does there is a, a lot of uh, arguments made against uh, how powerful it is and we spoke of one earlier this it doesn't catch soft plaque that has not yet calcified and I just thought you, you were very emphatic and clear on how that is a non-valid argument uh, but maybe yeah, speak it's to that. A, I mean again you, if you don't understand that you're missing the whole point mm -hmm. that the uh, the calcium it's sort of like an iceberg and if you float an iceberg in, in the ocean water, the water has a specific gravity, and related to the ice, so much ice is going to stick out of the water, so much ice is going to be below the water. But however big that iceberg is, the amount sticking out is directly proportional to the amount below, that's below the surface. So for someone to say, well, but it's not the the calcified plaque that causes the heart attack. That's not the point. The point is, the more calcium you have, the more soft plaque you have. The more soft plaque you have, the greater your risk of having a heart attack. So I used to tell my patients, if you have one soft plaque in all your coronary arteries, your chance of having a heart attack is infinitesimally small. But if you have 10,000 soft plaques in your coronary arteries, your chance of having a heart attack pretty damn high. And if that's the case, then you'll have a lot of calcium in your coronary arteries, which goes right along with all the soft plaque that's there. Exactly. And that was really put very well, I'll have to say. I've recently, as I've been kind of promulgating this information about calcium scanning, uh, one person, a good guy, great guy, a doctor, sent back and showed for diabetics, you know, even a zero score you know, at 15 years, where an average person with a zero score kind of has a 15-year warranty, it's that predictive. But diabetics can have 9% events at 15 years. But if you look at the actual graph, for not to 5 years following their zero, they have no events. And then 5 to 10 years and 10 to 15, they have events. So all that says to me is diabetics who are at huge risk of heart disease right. progression just need to get it more regularly to know when they're going into right. this danger when zone. Their, That's when all. their plaque burden gets to the threshold at which clinical events start to take place. But as long as your calcium score is zero, the amount of soft plaque you have is so small that we have proven that you don't, your chance of having a coronary or, or a cardiovascular event is you know, infinitesimally small. Exactly. So even for diabetics, Yep. If you check in and ensure you're still zero, yep. you've still got a low risk. But the key is you need to check. Because how are you going to know at year seven, eight, nine when your score goes up to 100? True and the same 400? thing is true as you grow older. Yeah. You may have calcium score of zero when you're 40. That doesn't mean you're going to be uh, plaque-free for the rest of your life. 